Ah, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Yo, welcome back to the channel, boys and girls. In today's video, I wanna show you guys some of the items and upgrades that I plan to do for my bike, specifically on race days. Now, of course, none of these items are required for actual racing. However, in the name of both efficiency and all things being aero, I figured these would be the items that I wanted to choose, and this is based on my own research, as well as the feedback from experienced crit racers here in the area. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys which bike that I've elected to use on race day, as well as giving you guys the reasons as to why. So let's get started. So now that I've gotten a few practice crit races under my belt, I'm starting to really understand just the physical and the mental demands um, that it takes to be in these crit races. And even though uh, Cat 5 races are only like 30 to 40 minutes long, I figured if I can eke out as much efficiency and aero gains as possible, that that will make my experience for these races just that little bit better. So the first item on this list are of course uh, tires. So the tires that I plan to be upgrading uh, for race day are these uh, Vittoria uh, Graphene uh, 2.0 uh, G 2.0 tires. Uh, these are a cotton based tires. Now I've used these tires uh, for training in the past uh, with other brands, but the problem that I always run into, especially because here in Chicago, the streets are just awful, that these cotton race tires are not really recommended for me personally. Uh, for everyday training use. And so because I've learned the hard way and I've had to deal with so many punctures out on the road, I plan to only use these on race day. Next on the list are latex tubes. Uh, so I've, I've heard sort of mixed results with these. A lot of people use these every day and they've told me that um, the rolling resistance is awesome with these compared to butane tubes. Uh, other people have told me that they are actually less uh, prone to puncture. So I don't really know, but I'm going to try them out. I'm going to test them out before race day to make sure that they work. Um, other people have reported that because these are latex, that you do have to pump them up a lot more frequently than latex tubes. And also too, because on my race bike, I am running deep uh, section carbon wheels. I will have to also, as I drop it, I will have to also install these um, valve extenders uh, because I believe these are only uh, for 48 millimeter and my carbon rims are 50 mil. Next on the list is uh, squirt wax chain lube. Now I use this stuff all the time as it is and it's really quiet and it's really smooth especially after you wash your bike and you've cleaned your chain really well uh, plus it keeps a lot of the road grime off of your chain um, so if you are looking for efficiency with your chain this stuff is really, really good. And I've also noticed that for the first two to 300 miles, the chain is really, really quiet. And it does get a little bit noisy once you get past 300 miles, um, but just remember to keep reapplying this stuff and you'll be all good. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, um, in order to install those valve extenders, I'll also have to use this core remover so that I can remove uh, the core uh, from the latex valves and install the valve extenders. Next on the list are a pair of uh, Aero socks. Now these Aero socks are from Montan Sports. Um, they do not sponsor this channel, so I did pay for these with my own money, but these are my favorite uh, Aero socks. Uh, they're tight, uh, they work really well for what they are, and it's a inexpensive upgrade to a regular pair of socks. And last but not least is my uh, skin suit. So this skin suit, of course, um, represents the, the team that I race for, which is a triple X Atletico here in the Chicagoland. Don't make fun of the name. I didn't come up with it, uh, but I've used this skin suit now on, on a few of my more high intense uh, club rides. And it's really, really comfortable. I've used this even as, as far as 80, 90 miles um, in one ride. So it's it's very comfortable. Um, the chamois on here is nice and wide. So especially when I'm in the aero position on the bike, it's nice and comfortable. I don't have any issues with discomfort. And being that it's a skin suit, it's super snug and it just gives me that little bit of uh, aero benefits, hopefully, right? All right, so I think we've gone over um, all the items that I plan to do on my bike. So the next thing we have to do, guys, is we need to install these new tires on my wheels and then I'll go ahead and show you uh, the bike that I've chosen for racing. So here are the four reasons why I've been using my Yolio R6 for racing versus my LA Sprint. Number one is I wanted to have a dedicated race bike with all the components I would need on race day. So that means no messing with cassettes or swapping out wheels or tires. I could just grab my bike and go. 
And being that these Jolio wheels are only 50 millimeter deep versus the 65 on my Windspace Hypers, I won't have any issues in crosswinds. Although with my Hyper wheels, I've never had an issue in crosswinds as of yet. And the second reason is gear ratios. So on this bike, I'm running a 5034 compact crank out front and an 11 to 28 cassette out back. Now you would think that I must be always revving out on my top gear, but so far that has never been the case during these practice races, even during my sprints. So I guess I must really do enjoy spinning to win versus grinding out on the gears. And the third reason guys is cost. Now, despite my LA Sprint being a quote unquote budget aluminum build, the overall costs were a bit higher than my Yolio build. And while I don't plan on crashing, I would rather race on the cheaper of the two, despite knowing that aluminum will hold up better in a crash than a carbon frame. And the fourth reason guys is just, I just love the way my Yolio R6 aero frame feels during these four corner crit races. People ask me all the time, how does the LA Sprint compare to my Yolio? And I can only describe it like this. My Yolio feels just like a go-kart. It's light, it's nimble, it's quick to accelerate, and it's just so easy to throw around. My LA Sprint, on the other hand, feels like a big body V12 Mercedes AMG. Once you get up to the higher speeds and maintain it, especially with the 65 millimeter wheels, trust me, it just feels like you can haul down the cycling version of an Autobahn for days. But at the end of the day, guys, I just prefer the handling and the zippiness of my Yolio R6 aero frame. And don't get me wrong, I love my LA Sprint as my everyday bike for fast group rides and for KOMs, but on race day, when I'm having to surge three, four times every single lap, I'm taking the setup of my Yolio R6 aero frame. Ah, well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now, if you excuse me, I do have some zone two endurance efforts to get done before my big race. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them down below. And I will check you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.